Well, here I am back again on side two of the tape. Uh, I got... Before I forget it, I got your tape. And... You recorded over at... Our house with Marcel and Rudy and all that. Like you said, the tape didn't turn out very good at first. I couldn't hardly understand it, and then it finally got better as it go gone along. And I thought that was really cute. And they were about... What was it? Happy New Year? Coming and jingle bells and all that. That was really cute. I'll bet you I knew who thought that up. I bet that was Alan's idea, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was Alan's idea. Was that? Well, it seemed like, like I said before, every night we went out on the town having fun. Well, it seemed like every night we went out and we had a ball all the time there. Well, after that, we got our... We're supposed to be back at Camp Sama by 7 o'clock, January 1st. That was after the New Year. That's starting the New Year. And everybody got back there, and we loaded on the bus, and we got at the airport about 8 o'clock. And then we took off in the airplane. Surprise, when we got on the airplane, it's oh, man, we're going to get a good, warm, you know, plane. We thought the plane was warm inside, and we get inside, and it was colder inside than it was outside. That was the truth. The temperature over there, it's about 30 to 40 degrees in the daytime when I was there, and it was about maybe 30, 25 at night. It was pretty chilly compared to the weather we had over here, but I don't know the weather we've been having over here. It's been pretty cool at night. So we got on the airplane, and we took off. It took us about four and, five, four and a half to five hours to get back to Da Nang. So we get back at Da Nang. And we sign, at, sign in where we got came to for a flight back in July. And we go over there. We meet these guys that, these couple guys I know, that were staying at this rest, this hotel. And we all bummed around. There were six of us. And did we ever have a ball? We thought we were going to leave the next following day on a flight out. And we go over there and we wait. And they... We get on the bus, and we go all the way out to the airplane, and the truck's out there with their luggage, and the plane finally gets in, and the guy says, some guy comes up to the door, he says, the flight's been canceled because they got cargo going out. So we had to go all the way back to the terminal, and we went over and got a place to sleep for the night. So that night... All of us got together, the six of us. We flip overnight. Next morning, we go over there, and they say that there won't be no flight out today. So we all together got together and hitchhiked up to the USO in Da Nang. And we had pretty much fun up there. And we went, took the big exchange they got up there. You just can't imagine all the stuff they had in there. One funny thing about it, they had caviar in there. They had, like I said, caviar, and had, they had a tape recorder there. Uh, I was thinking of buying. If I had the money with me, I would have. It cost $92, and it was like a stereo set. And this lady at the USO had a tape from Pittsburgh they sent around to all the USOs and it was the same tape recorder they had an exchange and all it cost was $92 and I found out back here at the base that they're selling them for $187 here so I can't figure out why what's the difference in price they're the same tape recorder same model and everything else so uh, if they do get any more in there like that I'm going to try to get one and send it home it's nothing like this tape recorder. It's about 20 times bigger and a heck of a lot better. It's something like a stereo record player, portable, that you can carry around, give you a little bit of an idea of it. So, after we got back from the USO, we went to the club and had a couple of drinks. Then we fooled around the rest of the night. And you can't... Oh, the weather up there. It was so cold. 
you had one blanket on with all your clothes on, you're still cold. I wish you had about two or three more. That's how chilly it was up there at night. And of course, we went to the Red Cross. And we go over there the next day. So we were hoping to get a flight out. Man, the guy says there might be a flight possible today. So we put our name down and everything else. We go out, go up to the USO again, spent all, got up there about 10 o'clock, and pulled around to about 4, and finally came back. We found out there was a plane left already for July. So we put our name down again, get a flight down to here, and the guy said there was another flight going out, so we got in luck, got a flight out. We got here about 7 o'clock at night, and all together, see what was it? I had 10 days when I should have had 8, because of the delay in Denang and the flights. I didn't get in any trouble with about it, but the guys that personnel said here, they thought we were, went over the hill, because it took us so long to get down. There was about 20 of us had trouble getting a flight out. Well, we had a real bad accident here. Uh, it was just helicopters coming over the ocean, and they starting to sput and spurn and everything else, like the engine's going to die. And he gets about 250 or 300 yards from the, the shore here, and the helicopter went down. And I found out later on that there was 10 people on the helicopter, and they couldn't find any of them. And if they've been finding, they found so far now, they found seven bodies that washed up on the shore, and they're still. About two or three of them left out there. <clears throat> and they still haven't got the helicopter up yet because the undercurrent is so bad out there that they can't, the divers, skin divers can't go down and hook up the helicopter so they can bring it in. Uh, it was just, I just finished that part about, you know, like going over the hill and I heard this sound of this helicopter. Like you put a, like an engine real close to the top of the water and hear this bubbling sound. And I, and I looked out there and I seen the, the propellers on the helicopter's wings starting to go down in the water. And there was people up here at the club said they seen the whole thing that happened. They seen the helicopter, he started to go down, he got toward the water, then he came back up. His motor started up pretty good. It seemed like his motor cut loose again. They say he dropped down in the water. Well, I had something that scared the heck out of me. See, it was, well, uh, it was Saturday night. This happened. We were working out on a runway out here, uh, stacking up old matting that they that they're not using. But it's uh, it's made out of steel, and they're we're putting bundling it up, and they're going to store somewhere. I don't know why they're keeping it, but they are. The new main is a lot lighter. It isn't this runway that we're working on now. It isn't concrete at all. It's made out of some kind of a steel. And this is the one that we landed on when we first came over here. And since we've been over here, we built a new runway across the way. So we were out there stacking this, and we had this light plant out there so we could see, and we, this jet was... These jets were taking off every once in a while, and this one jet took off, and we heard this. I was facing out that way, and I seen sparks to the back of it, and I heard a little thumping now, noise too, while he was taking off. And we just wondered what it was, and we turned the light plant out on the runway, and we seen this bomb out there. Then later on, we found out that it. It's a thousand pound bomb and it, and it had 250 pounds of TNT in it. And the guy, demolition experts that came and picked it up said it was, it was awful dangerous. So, we were awful lucky about that because we're, we were only about 65 or 70 yards away from it when the thing dropped off. And they went, of course they went down the runway and 
see if he dropped any more. And they said he flew out of the ocean, over the ocean and dropped the rest of them out there. There's uh, another thing with the jet. Last night, the sky was, it was, it was real hazy out and raining last night. And this one guy couldn't, this one jet couldn't get down low enough, and so he says he's going to get down low enough this time. And he got kind of too low. He dropped all his bombs, but he ran out, hit the top of the trees, and he put a big hole in his gas tank, spare gas tank, and tore the wings up pretty doggone bad. And I was talking to this one uh, guy in the Marine Corps here, sergeant, and he says that that this takes. It would take too long to fix it. He said it would take about a year or so. They're just going to ship it up and send it back. He says the guy who was flying the plane probably get grounded for about a week. And he said this, the CEO, he says, he says, your uh, life is a lot more important than trying to get, a, get close enough to the ground getting, getting VC. He said he got the VC with the bombs, but... He always says his life's a heck of a lot more important than them altogether. Uh, I get paid tonight, and tomorrow I'm going to get some money, mo some money orders, and send them home to you. So I haven't got a paid in a month now, and I'm going to send home around 155 or 160 dollars. So I tell you, in this tape, this tape might get there before the money orders will because I'm going to after I get through recording here I'm going to wrap it up and when the post office is open I'm going to go to the post office and mail it so you might get this tape before you get the money orders so you know there will be some money coming on the way because I think I wrote you a letter about it was it a day or, day or two ago something like that so, you know that I'm sending some money home to you, put in the bank. I don't know if I told you this on another side of the tape or not, but I can't remember. Uh, I put that piece of paper in there for the size of my wrist, and I would like you to send me a, a billfold. And I have my top drawer. Of, I think it's a shiver oak, and it's a black one. So my other one here is just about shut, and all the, where you put your pictures in, that's all falling apart, and the rest of it's all falling apart too. So, and would you get some more extra holders for pictures? Send me. Uh, don't send me any more canned good, no. I mean, like fruit and all that, because we get. Well, now I'm not out at the rock camp anymore, and we don't, we can get all the fruit we want in the morning, and usually all the time here now. So, if you would mostly, I would like is like, uh, peanuts, cashews, I mean, especially. Let me think, what else? Oh, I know one thing you can send me is some Reese cups. It's got peanut butter in them. Or like Babe Ruth's or Hershey candy bars, or something on that order. Instead of this, what this other candy even send me? Get a little, you know, a little different mix-up. I was tape just about over with, and I'm gonna sign out for now. Lots of love, Ron. Paul was down in Florida for a couple weeks. Then after he got home again, he took a short few hours nap or sleep and then had to get up and take us to the airport. I didn't want Otto to take us because I thought one trip to the airport was enough, but he insisted. Good old Otto, what would we do without him? I will have to sign off now as I'm running out of tape. Take real good care of yourself and write whenever you can, and all our love from Mom and Dad.
and of course Chi Chi too. She really missed us and she was going.